unless you know the orientations of d orbitals how interaction with the ligands is occurring you will not understand therefore let us know what are those d orbitals how are they aligned or oriented what are their shapes see here the five d orbitals are represented one by one let us see d z square orbital the orbital the lobe is along z axis and if you observe as like a ring is on the saturn satellite or the donut is a food atom or you can say medu vada their ring kind of the structure remains such kind of the ring is there around the z axis or along x and y so partly it has a orientation towards x and y and major orientation is towards z axis let us consider by yellow color positive wave function and by brown color negative wave function is represented wave function is not important at this moment but orientation shape is important what's the understanding of the d z square orbital d z square orbital is oriented more towards z axis and partly towards x and y see the second orbital d x square minus y square lobes are along x and y axis perfectly along axis so two opposite lobes are with yellow color and other two opposite lobes are with brown color are you understanding d x square minus y square orbital see the third orbital that's a d y z orbital the y z plane if i consider towards you the y axis and upside z axis then this will y z plane the lobes will be in between y and z axis two opposite lobes yellow color lobes are between y and z accordingly brown color opposite lobes are also between y and z so lobes are making angle 45 degree to axis to y axis and z axis so lobes are in between axes that's a d y z orbital see the next orbital d x z here also lobes are in between axes but axes are x and z means x axis to our left right and z axis upside the positive x and the positive z the in between x and z there will be the lobe similarly here lobe so what is the angle made by this lobe to the axis it is 45 degree to x and z axis so y z orbital is in y z plane x z orbital is in x z plane likewise now last orbital x y orbital it will be in x y plane x axis y axis so in between x and y there will be the lobe similarly other three lobes will be there what will be the angle by the lobe to any axis x axis or y axis it will be 45 degree what you are finding last three orbitals dxy dxz dyz those are in between axis and first two orbitals d x square minus y square and d z square those are along axis d z square majority contribution is along z axis and partly along x and y d x square minus y square completely along x and y axis d y z in between y and z d x z between x and z d x y between x and y orbitals that's our understanding of these orbitals this is very important if this imagination if these shapes are clear to you then next part interaction and accordingly energetics of various orbitals will be perfectly clear to you to make this concept clear with this model i explained to you so that concept will be more clear let us consider the red bonds z axis positive z negative z direction towards your right and left is x axis yellow color x axis positive direction negative direction towards your side and my side y axis positive direction of y and negative direction of y let us understand these orbitals again first orbital is d z square orbital the lobes are along z axis here plus as like donut the ring structure is there that ring structure is in this xy plane actually dxy dyj dxz three kinds of orbitals are there three pairs are possible likewise 
as d x square minus y square is there, there should be d z square minus y square, there should be d z square minus x square. But those are not there. Combination of that d z square minus y square and d z square minus x square is our actually d z square orbital. Other component we are not mentioning, but it is there. So that ring kind of structure is in xy plane so if i to understand this orbital this orbital is more along z axis and it is there in xy plane also not exactly x and y direction but in xy plane is that dj square orbital clear second orbital is dx square minus y square orbital it is perfectly along x and y axis so lobes will be along x axis and along y axis so it is in this x y plane and along x and y axis now see the third orbital d y z orbital where is our y axis yes towards u and towards means y where is z up and down so in between y and z here in between if i rotate that here here will be the one lobe of d y z opposite lobe will be here next lobe opposite lobe so likewise in between y and z the lobes will be there so i if i cut that yz orbital the lamina will be in this way it is a yz plane is dyz orbital clear it is not along y and z axis it is in between y and z axis now see the fourth orbital that's a dxz orbital now to be very clear it is x axis and z axis in between x and z one lobe opposite lobe third lobe last lobe so in between x and z so what is the angle made by those orbitals those lobes to the axis so to z axis 45 degree to x axis also it will make 45 degree angle so it is in which plane it is in x z plane this plane is perpendicular to previous y z plane when water molecule was studied at that time these planes were studied same concept we have to apply here now last orbital that is x y orbital d x y orbital it is your x axis and y axis where will be the lobe along x and y no in between x and y so lobe will be between x and y making 45 degree angle to x axis or to y axis similarly opposite lobe third lobe and last lobe likewise the lobes will be in x y plane is this dx orbital clear so what crystal bill 3 considers surrounding ligands whichever are there as point charges second point there is a electrostatic force of interaction ionic interaction between point charges negative point charges to so ligands and positively charged metal ion the d orbitals of free metal ions are degenerate and in spherically symmetric hypothetical field interaction will be there negative field of ligand and electrons of the d orbitals in spherical symmetric hypothetical field, degeneracy is maintained. But in our geometries, here octahedral, in other geometries, tetrahedral, square planar, triangular, trigonal, bipyramidal, any geometry you consider, the interaction will not be uniform as is there in spherical symmetric hypothetical field. Therefore, energy change will occur in the orbitals. If you know the shapes, then energy change will understand what are the shapes d z square orbital along z axis and in x y plane d x square minus y square orbital along x and y axis d y z orbital in between y and z d x z orbital between x and z d x y between x and y that's the understanding if you are with then basis of crystal field theory is clear to you let us apply this basis of crystal field theory in order to describe the various geometries while applying crystal field theory to various geometries the shapes of orbitals are important by the way contribution of axis to the orbital also is important means for example d z square major contribution is of z orbital or it has z component x z has x and z component d z square d y z d x z these are orbitals with z components in that d z square extremely high z component x z and y z it is a pair having the same z component other way x square minus y square x and y component x y x and y component but x y means lobes are in between the x and y axis so in generally the z component possessing orbitals and non z component possessing orbitals likewise we can divide the orbitals then perfect orientation also is important 
सी द जोमेट्रिकल अरेंजमेंट ऑफ मेटल एंड लिगेंट्स इन कॉर्डिनेशन नंबर थ्री स्ट्रक्चर विल बी ट्राइंगुलर हाउ टू प्लेस दैट शाल आई प्लेस इन दिस वे और शाल आई प्लेस इन द एक्स वाई प्लेन जनरली कन्वेंशनली अवर जेड एक्सिस इज अ प्रिंसिपल एक्सिस सो विच द प्रिंसिपल एक्सिस हियर सी थ्री देर फोर आई कंसिडर द प्लेन ऑफ द मोलिक्यूल इन एक्स वाई प्लेन Are you following? Out of that, one of the bond, let it be along x-axis. Other bonds, it is not along y-axis. It is making angle to the y-axis, and z-axis is perpendicular. It's our imagination of triangular coordination compound. Now, five d orbitals are there. Which d orbital will experience more interaction, more repulsion because of ligands approaching in these directions? first logic which we will apply z component possessing orbitals and non z component possessing orbitals z component possessing orbitals are dz square dxz dyz and non z dx square minus y square and dxy ligands are in xy plane they are not along z axis since ligands are not along z axis orbitals which have z component will experience less repulsion or the orbitals which are along x and y or near x and y or have x and y components they will experience more repulsion so let us talk about the more repulsion which two orbitals are there which have non z component dx square minus y square and dxy it's the first orbital dx square minus y square orbital how is that orbital lobes are along x and y axis here one lobe will be there opposite to that other lobe will be there so this lobe is directly facing the ligand strong interaction will be there so let me consider angle made here is zero with the ligand here this lobe will make which angle what will the angle with this direction of the ligand this ligand and this lobe dx square minus y square yes to x axis the negative direction of x is from your point of view this ligand will make 60 degree angle this will make 60 degree angle so for this lobe 60 degrees angle keep in mind for this lobe 0 degrees angle for this lobe 60 degrees angle now this is third lobe of dx square minus y square along y axis so pointing towards you the lobe of dx square minus y square which points towards you makes Which angle with this ligand, with this ligand approach, with this ligand direction, it makes just a thirty degree. Keep it in mind. This lobe has thirty degree separation. Similarly, the lobe which is pointing towards me, this lobe, the x square minus y square orbitals lobe, will make which angle to this ligand approach, thirty degree. So let us revise. Zero degree. 60 degree 30 degree and 30 degree total angular interaction here is 120 degree for whom dx square minus y square orbital i want to compare dx square minus y square orbital energy and dxy orbital energy therefore i am considering this all angular separation is that point clear now let me talk about dxy orbital and its angular separation again it is our molecule dxy orbital lobes are between x and y axis it is our x axis towards you and towards me y axis lobes are between x and y axis so one lobe will be here towards you y axis this x axis this here will lobe towards you how much angle this lobe dxy orbital lobe makes with this approach of the ligand yellow approach of the ligand it makes 45 degree angle keep in mind 45 degree similarly one lobe will be here towards my left side and this lobe will make how much angle to this x axis or to this approach will again 45 degree so 145 now 45 now let's talk about other two lobes it is our x axis towards you y axis in between x and y means it will make 45 degree angle to y axis here will be the one lobe and this green approach of the ligand makes how much angle to the y axis it makes 30 degree angle 
because total angle is 120 degree here no so it means 30 degree and lobes are making 45 degree angle how much difference is there how much angular separation is there between dxy orbital lobe and this approachable ligand just a 15 degree separation is there so keep in mind 15 degree previously 45 degree 45 degree now 15 degree let us see now last lobe of dxy orbital it is x axis towards me y axis between x and y there is lobe so direction of red interaction with the ligand makes 30 degree angle to the y axis but it is making 45 degree angle so how much separation is there only 15 degree separation is there so this low 45 degree 45 degree 15 degree 15 degree total 120 degree so angular separation with ligand approach of respective orbitals may be dx square minus y square or dxy is same therefore energetically they will remain same and those are the only orbitals which are experiencing strong repulsion therefore their energy will increase so out of five two orbitals are increasing in energy that i told to you now next three orbitals are there which have z component which are those orbitals dz square is one kind of orbital other dxz and dyz among these two kinds of orbitals which kind of orbital will experience more repulsion one is dz square orbital lobes are along z axis but by the way donut kind of shape is there no lobes are along x and y in x and y plane so whatever the lobes are there whatever the region of dz square orbital is there in x y plane that will experience more repulsion so its energy is one so repulsion other dxz orbital if i consider dxz orbital means between x and z the lobes are between x and z so those are not directly facing to the ligand those are making angle how much angle 45 degree angle and those are not in the plane so they also will experience the repulsion so two kinds of orbitals are experiencing repulsion one dz square where donut kind of the orbitals are there donut kind of the region is there which is facing directly to the ligand and dxz and dyz orbitals those are not facing directly to the ligand then who will experience strong repulsion dz square orbital will experience strong repulsion compared to dxz and dyz so among them energy of dz school will increase and energy of dxz and yz will decrease but what is important maintaining barycenter energy maintaining equilibrium energy is important so how can we maintain see the diagram here the dx square minus y square and dxy orbitals increases in energy and other two sets dz square and dxz and yz decreases in energy compared to barycenter in order to maintain barycenter the same the decrease in energy so energy of dz square is higher below that energy of dxz and dyz that's the energy sequence for triangular arrangement that's the energy sequence for coordination number three is it clear let us see in next part energy sequence for coordination number four now in coordination number four two kinds of geometries are possible tetrahedral and square planar let us discuss tetrahedral geometry in next part one important thing i like to bring to your attention i am saying decrease in energy and by the way i am saying repulsion repulsion and decrease in energy how is it possible wait i am saying decrease in energy with respect to barycenter with respect to spherically symmetric hypothetical field if i consider free metal ion orbitals relative to the energy of free metal ion orbitals energy of any orbital which is of lower energy than that of the barycenter also will be the higher so repulsion certainly is there but relative repulsion we are talking about where there is a more repulsion they will increase where there is a less repulsion they will decrease in energy in order to maintain barycenter the same in order to have the equilibrium energy in order to have the energy of spherically symmetric field now i like to ask a question in this trigonal complexes which orbital is of least energy just mention the name of that orbital in the comment box